Oh my God, folks, Lauren Bobert, is it over yet? Please make it end. Today she was on the War Room podcast with Steve Bannon, and she had a lot of things to say that really had no substance. It was all rhetoric. I mean, not one fact. Not one fact. And I mean, that's that's what voters see through. It's a transparent sort of thing. Voters know when a candidate has no substance. So she just switched from Colorado District 3 to Colorado District 4 because she almost lost, came within 100 votes of losing that seat to Adam Frisch. So she thought that if she switched to Con- uh, Colorado District 4, that she might actually stand a better chance because it's a little deeper red. We'll take a look at this. Evidently, it's not working out that way. This text says, start your money off with a bit of good news. After leaving Colorado 3 for a more friendly district, Lauren Bober placed 5th with 10% in a straw poll in her new district. 5th. Doesn't look like she's going to be around for too much longer, folks. Tristan Snell said the same thing. And I just want to play a few clips for you of what she said on the War Room podcast today. And and again, try to find any substance if you can. In the room, something that happened that was unprecedented last night. It's never happened in the history of this country. Uh, A sitting president, illegitimate as he is, directly attacked the Supreme Court. Yes, to he their threatened face. them. He threatened the yes. Supreme Court. Walk me through that. What was it like in the room? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, it was, it was bizarre. I mean, <laughs> uh, is this? Are, are you more with Zelensky or are you for America? Like, I don't understand. Because like, straight into Ukraine, he, he did go directly to our justices and threaten them. And this is following <laughs> up a 9-0 ruling uh, by the Supreme Court to keep President Trump on the ballot. Colorado tried to remove him from the ballot and. Uh, uh, and this is following up that ruling that he looks directly no. at them and, and threatens Wrong. them, saying uh, women have the right to vote. And you're going to find out, well, goodness, I think it's been over 100 years since we've had the right to vote. Is women's suffrage over yet? Uh, How insulting can she be to women? I mean, who who voted for this woman in the first place? But folks, the the dig that Biden had with the Supreme Court was not about them voting to keep Trump on the ballot. No. No, it was about overturning Roe versus Wade. That's what it was about. She was there. I I mean, was she there mentally? I'm beginning to wonder, but I've got to show you this too. So this is Lindsey Graham. He said this today, and while we're on the subject of abortion, it sounds like if they get the power to do so, they're going to go for a 15 to 16 week ban. 15, maybe 16 weeks. Insane. The reality of it, folks, is probably half of that. If they get the power to do so, you can rest assured they're going to go for eight to ten weeks if they can. So back to Lauren Boebert. She had this to say as well, folks. Regime, oh, if yeah. this regime continues and they take the House and, and, and keep the Senate, they will immediately, and he said it last yes. night in so many words, they are yes. going to pack the Supreme Court. So many words. The Supreme, my point is they have no... They are totally lawless. They didn't. He, Biden did not say anything about packing the Supreme Court. This is a just a creation of Steve Bannon. He just pulled it right out, folks. And then she said this. Have a listen to this. That for our nation to see a, an executive in, in that position. But right now, the entire Democrat Party is parody. And, and, and so we have um, a, a choice to make. Do you want more? of President Trump and his policies that enabled American families to prosper and live. You know, I just want to hold it right there for a second. Do you want more of Trump and his policies that allowed American families to prosper? Exactly which one are you talking about? I mean, literally, the only thing that he passed was the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which only helped the top 1%. The rest of it was just free riding, you know, on the previous president there. I mean, it was just free riding on Obama. I mean, he had nothing. It, it was just a free flow. I mean, that's, if you're talking about Americans that benefited, it was from the previous administration because he didn't do anything. Nothing. I mean, if, if you can think of something, please tell me. You know, MAGA fans, I'd, I'd love to hear it. What did Trump do to benefit Americans? 
out their very best lives or more of Joe Biden's disastrous policies that are uh, truly socialism and are driving us into common communism. Uh, so God. the American uh, choice is clear. Do you want socialism or do you want freedom? Joe Biden or President Trump? I'm voting for President Trump. What in the hell is she talking about? Socialism or communism? It's probably Obamacare, right? That program, that health program that's helped millions of Americans and hundreds of thousands of Americans probably avoid death because they're now getting health care that they deserved. I mean, if that's communism, if you call that socialism, I'm all for it. Then she said this, folks. The, the State of the Union was was very sad. The address was very sad. And I'm happy <laughs> that it's going to be Joe Biden's last address to the nation. You're glad because it's going to be Joe Biden's last. No, I, you got it all. It's asked backwards here. Lauren Boebert, this is going to be your last State of the Union. The last time you're warming the chair at the State of the Union. Because you're not going to be around. You're not going to get voted in for the next one. It's going to be Auf Wiedersehen. Adieu. So long. Farewell.